Okay, let's continue our study of factoring. Um, remember my flowchart. I know I, I put it up every time at the very beginning because I just want to drill it in and drum it in that you should always look for the greatest common factor first. And then when you factor polynomials, you should count the number of terms. We spent a lot of time recently on factoring three terms. And a lot of videos ago, we were working on factoring something with four terms. Now we're going to go and take a look at the situation where we factor something with two terms in it. And so the first scenario is difference of squares. There is one other scenario, sum and difference of cubes, and I hope to add that video at some point, but I'm going to focus right here in this particular segment. It's called the difference of squares. First, let's go ahead and show you a, a couple of products, two um, binomials that we multiply together, that give us what's called the difference of squares. So, not going to factor, I'm just going to multiply. So, if I were to FOIL these two binomials, which almost look identical, but one of the binomials has a minus sign in it, and the other binomial has a plus sign in it, but they have the same terms. So, when I FOIL those, the first terms multiply together to be an x squared. The outside terms multiply to be a positive 7x, and look at this, the inside terms multiply together to be a minus 7x. I like to line those up because they add to be 0. And a minus 7 times a positive 7 is a minus 49. And when I collect those two, I'm left with just the x squared and just that minus 49. This is called right here, it's two terms, it's called the difference of squares. This is a perfect square, I can take the square root of it. This is 2, the square root of x squared is x. And so I call this thing the difference of squares, and I'm always going to factor it back into the binomial where I have an x in the front, and then because I want the product to be a minus 49, one of these is going to be a plus 7, and the other's, uh, other is going to be a minus 7. Let's do another problem. So let's factor uh, x squared minus 25. And I say to myself, wow, uh, that's two terms. Oh, it's got a minus sign. Please remember, this is called the difference of squares. It's not called the sum of squares. It doesn't work with a plus sign in between. It's called the difference of squares. And, and so I'm kind of wondering if I put an x in the front of each of these and the square root of 25 is 5, or what two numbers multiply together to be a, a negative 25. One is a plus 5, the other has got to be a minus 5. And if I foiled that out, this 5x and this minus 5x would add to be nothing x. There's no x term. There's just this x squared term and then this minus 25. And I'm, I, I know that I've got this problem correct. So whatever you do, um, if I, I would potentially throw a problem at you that would look like this, and I hope you would say, uh-uh, not going there, can't be done, because it's not the difference of squares. Let me prove it to you or, or help you see why. The, the possible scenario that you might factor this into, you might think of putting a plus 5 here and a plus 5 here because their product is a positive 25. But when you FOIL this out, x times x is x squared, here you get a 5x and here you get a 5x and then right here you get that plus 25. So yeah, you do get the x squared and you do get the plus 25, but when you multiply that out, this 5x and this 5x adds to be a 10x. There is no way to factor this problem. It is not two terms with a minus sign between and us, it being both squares. So please don't let yourself factor that. Next problem. Let's go with um, a negative 49 plus 25t squared. So again, two terms. T squared terms at the back. You know, it's possible to work with this as is, but it's a lot nicer to put the 25t squared first and then the minus 49. And then let's look at this and go, oh, wow, minus sign in the middle. Two terms. Squares. Difference of squares. I can take the square root of 49. 7. I can take the square root of 25. 5. So I'm going to go ahead and just directly write this in factored form and write the first term as 5t because 5t times 5t is 25t squared. 
because of this minus 49, I'm going to put a plus 7 here and a minus 7 there. I could have put a minus 7 here and a plus 7 there. It doesn't matter which order. And if you need to for a while, so uh, this is called the sum and difference of like terms, factors into this, this um, difference of squares. But if you'd like to, go ahead and multiply this out to check it. And there you have a 25t squared. And right here you'll have a minus 35t. And right here you'll have a positive 35t. They had to be nothing. And 7 times that minus 7 is that minus 49. And this is 25t squared minus 49. That's what I started with. Let's see, I've got a couple more that are difference of squares but get a little bit more elaborate. So here's the first. I don't have to have an x squared term right here. I just have to have an even exponent. Oops, I'm sorry, I meant for that to be a 4. Let's, let's correct that. So 16x to the 4th minus 81. Two terms, minus sign. Wonder if I can take the square roots of the coefficients. Yeah, square root of 81 is 9. Yeah, square root of 16 is 4. So let's try factoring this into 4x to what power do I need here? I want, I want these two to multiply together to be x to the 4th. So I better put a 2 here and here. Because x squared times x squared is x to the 4th when I add those exponents. Let's see, square root of 81 is 9. Let's put a plus 9 in one of these, a minus 9 in the other of these. And you should always, in any factoring problem, stop and go, huh, I wonder if I'm done. And this one is done. It's two terms with a plus sign. But you see this right here? It's two terms. It's got a minus sign in between, and I can take the square root of 4. I can take the square root of 9. So it's called the difference of squares as well. So I can factor that again. And I, I'll need a 2x here and a 2x here, because that product is 4x squared. And I'll need a 3 and a minus 3. It doesn't matter what order, because that product is a negative 9. And then I have to bring down this binomial as well. It could not be factored. This is the factored form of the original problem see how we're doing for time. I'm going to keep these not too long. Let's, uh, let's do one more. So 49p to the 4th minus 25q to the 6th. So I just have to have even exponents on my variables for it to be a perfect, a, a perfect square. All right, square root of 49. Yeah, 7. But be careful, I better put a 7p squared here so that their product will be the 49p to the fourth. Square root of 25. 5 and a minus 5. But I want a q factor on these, and I need those to multiply together to be q to the sixth, so I better use q to the third, because when I add those exponents, I get q to the sixth power. And I could FOIL this out, the middle terms would disappear, and my first term would be the 49p to the fourth, and my last terms would be the minus 25q to the 6th. That's a pretty good look at the difference of squares and factoring.